that means welcome to Match Wrestling episode 405. This is your captain speaking along with El Jefe, Moses Marquez. Coming up on tonight's episode, the Mandy Rose controversy. Winter came for AEW. Sasha Banks on her way to Japan. Bobby Lashley on his way home. Maybe even the unemployment line. And Vince (laughs) on his way back to the E. Please, for the love of God, say it's not so. All this and more. Please, please say it ain't so. Um... Before we begin, remember to like and sub to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash maxwrestling and follow us on social media at maxwrestlinguk. Now let's jump into our headline. Let's not waste any time. Let's address the elephant in the room. Of course, um, Wrestling World exploded last night hey. over the release of Mandy Rose. Hey. I know somebody that exploded. I mean, um, <laughs> extensive research aside. You know. <laughs> extensive research aside. No, um. I mean, if you wanted to piss off the IWC, I don't know how else you could do this, but um, I have never seen more whacking hands come to the defense in typing mode than whacking mode like that, boy, like that. Yeah. They came in like a hurry, like a flurry on on every platform, Twitter. so uh, Literally, Twitter blew up. TikTok followed. Um, I mean, there was even posts on Facebook. Like, it got crazy. Yeah. I mean... Normally, you get at least some people going, ah, they deserved it, or, ah, big deal. But literally everybody's defended Mandy. And, um, I mean, I can't say I blame them because at the end of the day, it wasn't her fault. Really. Let's, she, didn't, I mean, she didn't ask for a shit to get leaked. Well, okay, so let's, let's, um, let's clue everybody in that doesn't uh, fully aware. So she got fired because she had um, private content exposed. The reality is, is apparently like this stuff was going to get on her site anyway. It was on that point of getting to her site. She was using, I forget the name of the company uh, that she was using, but it's not an OnlyFans, but it's like a sub site of an OnlyFans. Yeah. And she's put all kinds of risky photos up on there. And apparently she was garnering so much attention. She was making so much money that they kind of figured it was going to lead to her doing more. And then, hey, guess what? A video of them, which was eventually going to go up on her site, gets leaked. And yeah, boom, it has to be fired. She has to be fired. They have to make an example out of her. But they're already talking about bringing her back. Yeah. What the fuck is the point of this? Exactly. It's just wait till the heat dies down and you can come back. But. Like, I, I, that's my that's my thing right now. I had a few people hit me up on TikTok and I'm just like. The way I'm looking at it is she's not going to go to AEW. This isn't one of those things where it's, okay, she's gone. They're going to spin this as an angle for her to go back on television. It's probably going to end up being through the Rumble because they want her back. They're not going to just let her go. Like, she's a star to them now. Oh, yeah. She was, what, 400-plus days as champion? Exactly. And it was a giant shock when she lost. But you're going to tell me. After I understand, yes, that was a different time and all that, but and maybe you know, but I don't know. Fucking the way everything is these days, it's it, you can't get away with anything from back then. Now nothing, and no, and honestly, you want to know? I think it was it was it was Sean that pulled the plug. It was Sean that Sean. Yeah, it was it was it was Mister. It was Mister. Let me pose butt naked with this title belt. That uh, said, hey, y'all know about this thing going down with Mandy? And they said, nope, pull the fucking belt. I mean, so. <clears throat> it doesn't shock me. I mean, both Sean and Road Dog are both hardcore God's boys. Well, yeah. Man. Um, so, I mean, obviously, this can't, can't be having that. Can't have that. Um, <clears throat> sinful. But again, this is WWE, and I think that's what got most people's backs up is... WWE has a history of sexual exploitation. They've done deals with Playboy. Um, and advertised many, it. Advertised, advertised it. it. They, they even used the Playboy cover in storylines for yes. China and stuff. I was just going to say, I was like, I remember the, the, the cover being revealed like on, like, was it a Raw? Yeah. So it's like. And um, Eddie tried to cover it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <that> was, <laughs> God damn, I miss Eddie. That's literally um, one of the biggest what ifs in pro wrestling is what happened oh, if, yeah. what happens if Eddie doesn't die. Oh yeah. The probably the biggest. Oh yeah. Because yeah. I always say WWE completely changed in 2005. 
Oh yeah, it, it flipped upside down. Watching um, a whole new show after that. But it's not just like they WWE's history of stuff. It's the double standards with like uh, plenty of other women in WWE have had their stuff leaked. Tony Storm being one of them. And I, I, I and a lot of people made the obvious comparison to Paige. I really don't see any difference between this and Paige other than the fact that Paige wasn't selling her stuff. Thank you. But her and sex that, tapes got leaked. And that, and is ex- that is exactly what it is. She's making too much money yeah. outside of our spectrum. And you can't be making no money on our sex appeal. No, it may only, be you, but it's ours. Only we can make money off your sexuality. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> How dare you go make a dime? Uh, oh, I, I, I mean, I made the joke that, well, we all know who Britt Baker's next feud's against, but yeah. She'll be back soon. It's She'll just be. one of those it's, things. I think it took everybody by surprise because one minute she's just dropping the title out of nowhere when it should oh, have yeah. been in a couple of weeks next yeah. week. Um, I was going to say, whatever they're... She's fired. Yeah, but because but that's and then but again that's the thing is we are so used to the precedent of well he did Playgirl and they did Playboy and you're fucking the oh you know the 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 guy with the, the, the was it the lead shareholder of or the majority shareholder of the company just has multiple sexual allegation after sexual allegation and all you did was tell him to go away for a little bit and they're threatening to bring him back. Yeah, that that's another thing that a lot of people uh, are pissed off about is the timing. Also, this happens like this almost. Is it the same day or the day after the rumors started circulating that Vince might be on his way back mm-hmm. after all the mm-hmm. shit that's happened with him and his okay. CD passed? Literally the day, the next day. Literally the next day. It's like him faking his death all over again. I like it. Well, we better pull this storyline. It's going to have a negative impact. Yeah, no shit. Um, I don't think very many people are thrilled at the prospect of Vince coming back, except for all the obvious blowhards. There, hey, they, you, uh, I was going to say, I was like, you'd be surprised. There's some cats ready to lick some carpet. Oh, spoiler alert. There's one on shit, Mark. Say later. Oh, Lord <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, again... It, it's it's double standards, which is what piss, piss people off the most, I think. Yeah, um, I'm in that boat. That's what. And, that's why I remain indifferent. Like I and and then here's the reason. Here's the the legality reason of why she was fired. It's in the contract for them to not be doing things outside of their spectrum. I understand that, but she had that shit before that contract and then after that contract. So yeah. y'all were cool with it. You just seen how much money she was making and was like, no, no, no. That's what I was going to say. They, they're they well aware of her adult content. I mean, she even on her own Twitter page and Instagram, she oh, still yeah. posts like nudie stuff. So it's like it's not it's like it's something new that she's doing. Exactly. It's this. Exactly. It's nothing new. It's just that some douchebag decided to publish it. A. Hey, the douchery. Um, and if. The screenshot was correct that I saw uh, of a DM. He also tried to extort her for a thousand dollars to take it down. Also, oh, she got blackmailed. So we're <laughs> giving her shit for getting blackmailed. But then Paige, what happened with Paige? I give, mm, come on mm. now. Um, I don't. I don't think Mandy paid. I mean, again, if the screenshot's legit, oh. um, she pretty much threatened to get his profile deactivated, and he just took it down. But by then, it was too late. Damage done. Yeah, exactly. Damage done, and that's the unfortunate part. But again, it, it, the rum, rumble is what two weeks, three weeks away, something like that. I, d- rumble, I don't expect uh, six weeks. Six weeks. Sorry, thank you. I'm over here, extra early. Yeah, I'm we got sure no pay per view in December this year. Oh, that's right, huh? Thank God. Sorry, premium right. live events. Whatever, fine. Take a fucking break. I appreciate it. <laughs> Shit, it's it's nice. Give it a breather. Um, yeah. but no, that's that's fine. That's 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 perfect time. Let her fucking sit at home. She's going to keep making money anyway. And then, you know, she'll be back. No big deal. They'll make it a story. Unless Vince comes back before she does, then <laughs> maybe she will go to AEW. Uh, and one of the worst things is she was supposed to lose the title at New Year's Evil. Mm-hmm. Um, if she'd have held on to it for like another week, I think she would have become the second longest reigning NXT Women's Champion of all time. She's Ooh, currently nice. the third. 
I'm about to say, I think one in, one was Oscar, and who was the second? Shayna. Sh- oh, that's right, Shayna. She was like a week behind Shayna. Oh, lo- yeah, that's not gonna happen week. again. Nope. There it is. Now, now you're just gonna pass Mandy. Everybody's just gonna pass Mandy now. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Um. So do we do we see Roxanne as? Like going on a long run too, or is she a placeholder, or is she a transitional champion? Because there was I, a lot of hype behind Alba Fire at the time. I was just gonna say, I think this is just their way of making an easy transitional champion to Alba Fire. She seems, and I hate to use the term, on fire. No pun intended. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> like I mean, she she got a what was the goddamn pay per view that they just did, or no, the deadline. Live event deadline. She just had a great match there. You know, look dominant, extremely dominant. I haven't really seen her loss except for fucking title matches. So it's like, you obviously didn't want to beat Mandy, which we we understand. And then now you're like, well, because of this, we have a reason. So, but you no, know, I, I I think she'll hold on to it for a little bit. But I mean, they want a star, and yeah. and right now, Alba Fire is is that star. I don't see them bringing anybody else in. Unless they decide they want to like take this new version of Oscar and send it back to NXT, that'd be fantastic. But I mean, yeah, and I mean, uh, Roxanne Roxy seems Roxy. to be kind of downplayed a little bit because she was pretty big in Ring of Honor. But anybody that didn't watch Ring of Honor doesn't really know who she is, and she doesn't seem like that big of a deal in NXT as as big as she was in Ring of Honor. Uh, indie darling, for sure. Yeah. Whereas Alba Fire or Kaylee, uh, not Kaylee Ray. Um, God, I know I forget her regularly. Kaylee Ray is coming back to wrestling, no? Yeah, but what the fuck did they change her name to? Wait, is it Kaylee? Yeah, the other one's Kylie. Yeah, Kylie Ray. There's too many fucking Kylie. Yeah, put, stop Ray's. putting Ray at the name of your fucking name of your shit, bro. Um, let's just stick with Alba Fire then. There you go. Like a lot of people go behind her, even though she's pretty much an indie darling. She hasn't really been anywhere huge. Yeah, but that's she's true. carrying a lot more momentum. Yeah, but I mean, course, she. Okay. She also had a big run in NXT UK. Just gonna say, I was like, that's probably where she got her most, the most of her momentum. Mm. So. Uh, so we'll see, and we'll also see if Mandy ever comes back to NXT, or if she's going straight to the main, uh, if or when she comes back. Straight to the moon. Just don't rehire Vince. Just don't do it, and um, so you catch the video while you can. Get your lotion. I mean, what? Uh, I didn't say that. Oh boy Alright before we continue with what's happened this week Let's go back a little further with this week In wrestling history And there's a lot of history yeah, a lot of history this week. Um, <clears throat> okay, December 9th, 2001, an iconic night in WWE as Vengeance was the first post-invasion angle pay-per-view after the Alliance were defeated at Survivor Series. Um, after Stone Cold successfully defended the WWE Championship against Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho went on to defeat both The Rock for the WCW title and Austin for the WWE title in the same goddamn night to become the first undisputed champion. I fucking love that catch line. In the same goddamn night. It's the best. <laughs> how how long did he use that tagline? Like the only person to ever beat Rock and Austin in the same night. Oh, he <laughs> fucking used it forever. <laughs> it's a shame he still can't use it. Maybe, I mean, he can still say like Dwayne and Steve in AEW or something. Oh, you he come on, you could totally spit it. I mean, they're over there <laughs> dropping the fucking. Oh, you're like Roddy. Oh, you remind me of Dwayne. You're like, come on, you already know that they're, if they want to, they will. True. Um, yeah, and also in it, shit. Interesting bit of trivia for this event. Uh, it also featured Triple H with his sledgehammer on the poster, though he wasn't actually part of the event and was still out from his quad injury. He didn't actually return until the following month. Hey, you put trips on a poster back then, it was going to sell some money, all right? I I don't remember that poster, though. I remember, like, the event poster, and we had, like, Austin, Rock, and Kurt Angle, and Jericho on it. Um... Or something like that. But I don't remember a Triple H poster until like a couple of years later. I was like, wait a minute. He wasn't on the show. Nope. 
Because I don't think they even advertised him until the January and they were saying he's coming back with the whole YouTube beautiful day shit. No. Yeah. Um, December 9th, 2003 at Battle Final. Not to be confused with the Ring of Honor pay-per-view. Nope. Shinsuke Nakamura defeated Yoshihiro Takayama to win the IWGP heavyweight title for the first time, unifying it with the NWF heavyweight title. Mm-hmm. Back when, uh, uh, back when Shinsuke was still doing the MMA. Yes. Yeah, 2009. Yeah, that's going way back. Mm-hmm. Um, December 9th, 2017. Nick Aldis won the NWA World's Heavyweight title for the first time, defeating Tim Storm at Combat Zone's Cage of Death 19. Aldis went on to hold the title for 266 days before, of course, dropping it to Cody Rhodes. That guy. Yeah, that guy. Um, at all in, and then of course went in it back and going on a historic run. Oh, you're telling me? What was he? What? How far did he get? It was like a thousand days. Did it was to a thousand? well over a thousand. Yeah, that's right. I there think go. we covered it a few weeks ago. I think he's like the sixth longest singular reigning champion in NWA. Jesus Christ. Um, one of my favorites, December 10th, 2000, WWE presented Armageddon featuring the first and only six man Hell in a Cell match, which saw Kurt Angle defend the WWE title against Rikishi, The Rock, Stone Cold, Triple H, and The Undertaker. How many more fucking A listers can you put in one match? I mean, like, if all in all reality, if anybody it was Rikishi, was like the odd man out, but Jesus yeah. Christ, was he like awesome in that match? He was the man in that one. Yeah, that was, was a classic. He was still like the semi-main eventer in that match, but he was making his way up, and he was on this heel run because, of course, he was the one that ran over Stone Cold um, on Triple H's orders, but he did it for the Rock. And, of course, he took the iconic, I, I want to say dive off the top of the cage, but he pretty much just free fell backwards yep. onto the hay truck. But still, <laughs> I'm not free falling Which, for shit. If you look back at it, Obviously, Triple H and the Stooges brought out the truck to tear down the cell because Vince was totally against this match taking place because, obviously, there's a lot of big names in there. You don't want to get them all injured. But mm-hmm. Mick Foley was like, no, nah, it's happening because he was commissioner at the time. Crazy bad. Um, and at the time, you're thinking, why the fuck are they coming out in a flatback truck full of hay to pull down a cell? Wouldn't it make more sense to have, like, a you know, something heavy duty? Right. But then you realize, oh, that's what it's for. For, to break Rikishi's fall. <laughs> because and that big man could just land it. Hey, he'd be all right. It took so much out of Taker to... Pretty, he didn't even choke slam him. He just pushed him. Yeah, he, he just pushed And he, he slept on the roof for the rest of the match. <laughs> Rikishi's a big man. He had to throw him far. Right? <laughs> yeah. So you ready to push you real hard. Um, I think this was also like... Only the third time that they actually broke out of the cell. Obviously, they broke out in the first one and then Taker and Mankind before the match even began. Mm-hmm. But I think this is like the third time they all broke out because, of course, they tore down one side of the cell. Absolute mayhem. Ah, great stuff. Um, December 11th, 2005, at Turning Point, Samoa Joe changed the game when he defeated AJ Styles for the X Division Championship, becoming the heaviest champion at the time, and reminding everybody that the X Division was not about weight limits, it was about no limits. That was yeah. a great tagline. Joe's the man. He's Joe, got Joe great taglines. And nobody wanted to fuck with Joe in 2005. He was on a monster run in CNA. I, as a guy, again, and I, I've, I've been extremely vocal of my lack of TNA. Even I was impressed with any time I would see anything from Samoa Joe. And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, I mean, he only came in that year at um, Slammiversary. I think his first match was against Jushin. Wow. Or, he, or maybe he faced Jushin at Bound for Glory. I can't quite remember who he faced at Slammiversary, but he bodied him anyway. And then he was right. undefeated for like a year. Love it. Uh, December 11th, also, uh, in 2014, do yourselves a favor, go back and watch NXT take over our evolution. Not only was it the WWE debut of Kevin Owens, um, Charlotte versus Sasha Banks for the NXT women's title, and Finn Balor and Hideo Itami, Kenta, versus mm-hmm. The Ascension. But the main event was crafted from one of the best uh. stories WWE have produced in the last 20 years, maybe more, as Sami Zayn finally won the gold against Neville. Before he was Uzi. 
before he was Usi, way before he was Usi, the big underdog story in NXT, he just couldn't quite win the big one. And then when he finally did, uh, celebrates with the whole roster before being betrayed by his best friend, Kevin Owens, to close the show. Yeah, after having his fucking nose broke by goddamn juice. <laughs> or time, what yeah. Was, goddamn. Yeah, I what, about uh, that. Uh, uh, fuck, what was his stupid name in goddamn? Oh, CJ Parker. DJ Parker. Yeah, I forgot KO comes in first night, gets his nose busted by CJ. Um, so he comes in as a face, bleeds on the first night, celebrates with his best friend who, you know, they're finally both in WWE together. And then just when you think the show's over, bang, you, uh, you literally, you literally wanted to buy KO shirts that day, that yeah. day. You were like, I, you were getting ready to walk out and buy one. And then they hugged and then you're like, I'm definitely buying one. And then fucking killed him. Because I mean, anybody familiar with their history knows that they they were best friends and tag team partners, and then big, huge rivals in Ring of Honor. So you understand, like you know, they're best friends in real life. They're celebrating being in NXT together, but then you get Kevin Steen back as he mm-hmm. just destroys Sami Zayn. Exactly. That's if you, if if anybody wants some true history on these cats, it, you go look up Kevin Steen versus El Generico. Their history goes as far back as when uh, Kevin Steen called himself Mr. Wrestling and used yeah. to wrestle in a singlet. Can you imagine Kevin Owens in a fucking singlet? It was it was weird. I'll just tell you that it was weird. Um, but I liked it a lot. He was very he was just as cocky. Yeah. Um, but his his when he went full blown Kevin Steen, um, even during the the Jim Cornette era, if you will, of of Ring of Honor. Eek. He was he was as much stone cold as you could be without being stone cold. Yeah, it was great. Uh, and even today, he's the closest thing we've got, I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, December 12th, 1999 at Armageddon, the McMahon Helmsley era officially began as Stephanie betrayed her father against her new husband, Triple H, turning heel for the first time in her career. Mm. That bitch. Fucking bitch. December 13th, 1998, at Rock Bottom in Your House. Yes, The Rock had his own pay-per-view because he was a corporate champion. Yes, um, Mankind defeated The Rock for the WWE Championship when The Rock passed out to the Mandible Claw. However, this would have been Foley's first WWE title win, except Vince declared that because The Rock did not physically submit, he was still the champion. Yep. Screwed him left and right, they did. Yeah, building up to that iconic January 4th night where Foley did win the big one and everybody changed the channel. Everybody. Which I think was actually taped like a week after this. There was like a three-week delay or something stupid. Probably. That sounds okay. Okay, that sounds legit. I mean, considering the fact that back then in the 90s, like, yeah, we, we would go a couple weeks without a, without a show. Because, yeah, that's how WW, uh, WCW leaked the result because it was pre-taped. Mm-hmm. And it just so happens to be the most important night of the Monday Night Wars. Fucking A right. <laughs> um, Stone Cold also defeated The Undertaker in the main event in a buried alive match with an assist from Kane. Uh, as a result, Austin qualified for the Royal Rumble. Kane screwed Taker in a buried alive match twice. There was this one and the one against Vince. Oh, yeah. So basically. <laughs> If you're Undertaker and you're in a buried alive match, watch out for Kane. Watch out for Kane. <laughs> watch out for the mayor or the, the governor, or whatever the fuck oh, he is. Yeah. Um, December 14th, 2003 at Armageddon, all four members of Evolution became new champions as Randy Orton defeated Rob Van Dam for the Intercontinental title. Ric Flair and Batista won the tag team turmoil to claim the world tag team titles, um, which I think was also right after Batista beat Shawn Michaels one-on-one. And Triple H defeated Goldberg and Kane to regain the World Heavyweight Championship. The show ended with all four standing dominant on the stage. Iconic photo. I remember being so fucking mad. So fucking <laughs> mad. I'm like, God damn it. I felt like Jim Ross. I was like, you son of a bitch. Why? Tell me why. But um, at the same time, it was such a cool image to see like the whole faction all with gold. Yeah. True. I mean, it, it was it was a great picture. It made you think like this is going to be the future. And then for me, I I was like, they fucked up. They fucked up. Should have mm-hmm. put Randy and Rick together. You're like, you should have made you should have made Batista your IC champ. Should have ran with him as your singles guy. But I understood. You know, Randy had a lot more to offer. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, his IC run was phenomenal. Exactly. <clears throat> um, and another little bit of trivia: this was the second year in a row that Triple H ended somebody's World Heavyweight Title reign after a month. Uh, Shawn Michaels won it at Survivor Series the previous year. Goldberg won it at Survivor Series that year, and Triple H beat them both at Armageddon. <laughs> this, that was Triple H's big douchey run as heel. Fucking Hunthor beat everybody. Uh, December 14th, 2015, despite interference from Rusev and asshole Del Rio, uh, and even Vince McMahon, who came out of the shadows for one night, Rowan Reigns became WWE champion for the second time, gaining revenge after his first time was instantly cut short by Sheamus cashing in money in the bank. Yep. They um, tried so hard to get this fucker over. And it, I think it actually worked for this one night. And then the next night, everybody started booing him. The next week, everybody started booing him again. We had a different <laughs> town. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, Vince wasn't there to gain the heat. Yeah. He, he is a giant <laughs> heat magnet. Um, I think that was the idea. Like, Roman's not getting over. Send in the big guns. Ultra heel Vince. Yeah, right. If he, if he hits Vince, everybody's going to love him. <laughs> Uh, December 14th, 2018, um, she's appeared on Match Wrestling, and we missed seeing her wrestle. Kelly Klein won the Women of Honor Championship for the first time, defeating the inaugural champion, Sumi Sakai. And you know what? I still completely stand by her. She called out Ring of Honor, and rightfully so, and they fired her for it. Hey, stand your ground, girl. Stand your ground. Um, I mean, why should, why should anybody need concussion protocols or time off to heal Mm. <clears throat> oh, looking um, for every, looking out for everybody, not just yourself. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go back to Ring of Honor, I'm sure TK's a little more. Uh, yeah, careful. I'm sure it's a little bright, but but then again, I don't know. That's she's probably like, I'm not even gonna. Oh yeah, that, that, those bridges are probably burned. Well, but she's a shame, big shame. She had a lot of potential. Yeah, she did. Um, I remember, like, in, in this year, in 2018, she was over huge with uh, anybody, like, outside of the WWE bubble. Everybody knew Kelly Klein. Oh, yeah. She she was definitely one of those indie names where you would be able to go around and you could say it to people and you she would be able to talk mm-hmm. about. I mean, yes, ROH still was very much a niche group, but you knew names, especially during this Women of Honor tournament. Yeah. <clears throat> like we said, Sumi Sakai was the first ever Women of Honor champion, and everybody thought it was going to be Kelly Klein. Yeah, everybody was disappointed when it wasn't Kelly Klein. Yeah. Um, I think she appeared on Max in the January, so this was like, what, 11 months later? Oh, sweetness. Um, today in history, we got three pieces of history for today. In 2002, both world championships changed hands at Armageddon as Kurt Angle defeated Big Show for the WWE title. And as I just said, Triple H beat Shawn Michaels in a three stages of hell match, mm. which I think was the first ever three stages of hell. All before that was just straight two out of three falls. Sounds right. <clears throat> um, today in 2008, 14 years ago, Jeff Hardy won the uh, WWE Championship for the first time ever, defeating Triple H and Edge at Armageddon. Huge pop. Yeah, and hugely deserved, too. Oh, yeah, it was was fucked the anticipation, anticipation, anticipation. Finally paid off. Um, And finally, today in 2013, the big gold belt was officially retired after Randy Orton defeated John Cena at TLC to unify the World Heavyweight Championship with the WWE Championship. Um, Although its title history was retired on this day, it continued to be carried by the WWE Champion until the new and the current network logo design was introduced to Brock Lesnar in 2014. I I actually kind of liked him walking around with both them belts to look badass, but I mean... Yeah, I remember... Poor Daniel Bryan, though, like when he won them both and he couldn't lift one of them because his arm was fucked. <laughs> yeah, I know. Poor, <laughs> poor guy. It is what it is, though. I do miss the big gold belt. I will tell you that. Do miss the big gold belt. Yeah. And and if I had a setup like Moses, it'd be hanging right there because I got the big gold belts. Beautiful belts. Trust me, I'm 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 trying to get that one. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and that is all your history. All right. Now let's have some fun. And let's see if you can get there before we do. It's time. To guess the wrestler. I wonder who this could possibly be. Guess the wrestler. He's the bestler. Better, Better than, than all, all the wrestler. 
Um, we got a lot of championships that I really didn't know about. Oh, this is going to be fun. That's a lot. These. Um, okay, let's start with some obscure ones. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I, I literally don't know where to start. Border City Wrestling, BCW Can Am Heavyweight Champion. Um, Bill Town Championship Wrestling, which is also BCW, Heavyweight Champion one time. Um, European Wrestling Association, European Junior Heavyweight Champion twice. Hmm. Uh, let's, go, let's go a bit more into the territories. NWA Florida, um, one time Independent World Champion, one time World Heavyweight Champion. Um, National Wrestling Conference, two time Heavyweight Champion. Um, what the fuck? Juggalo Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. <laughs> fuck. Uh, Juggalo. Fuck. What goddamn nerd would have to fucking be NWA champ and then turn around and be Juggalo? Uh, also, Insane Wrestling Federation, two-time heavyweight champion. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's where the Juggalos are. God damn it. I hate Juggalos. Yeah. I'm already going to get a lot Juggalos of Juggalos and Juggalos. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't stand them, though, but. <laughs> yeah, of course, backyard wrestling. Well, no, no, it's I. I don't give a fuck about that. No, do your thing. I like the wrestling. I do. I can't stand fucking the insane clown posse. I just can't. Oh, just, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'll get some hate for it. I'm sorry. Um, we got some New Japan um, UWA World Junior Light Heavyweight Champion once, and IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion once. Old school. We're old school. Fuck old school. Right. Pretty old school. Is Ray Ray Mysterio? No, Ray Mysterio didn't go to Japan and win. Who won in Japan? Around around that generation, no. In Japan, that would be fucking around with goddamn Juggalo. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Liger. Not Liger, no. Um, I'm about to say Liger. I'm disappointed. Has wrestled for WWE, but didn't win any championships there. Not surprising. Um. Russell Observer reads his favorite wrestler in 1994. 94? Yeah. Takamichi Noku. No. Uh, World Wrestling Council. Um, one time Universal Heavyweight Champion, one time and final WWC Hardcore Champion, uh, and won the Bruiser Brody Memorial Cup in 2005. Also won a match of the year in TNA in 2005. <laughs> Well, TNA's match of the year, anyway. Hmm. Um, also a one-time Stampede Pacific Heavyweight Champion. Stampede Pacific. What was his... When, uh, when was he in the E? Uh, 2006 to... I want to say 2008, 9. Only a couple years. Damn. Seven. Oh, just a one year, then. A year with the E. Didn't do, and it was a member of that. Oh, that was during the time nobody fucking watched. Nobody. Okay, I do have one particular company uh, okay. with a few championships, which might lead us on a straight and narrow path. Go with it, because I'm thinking, I'm trying, I'm really trying to, I, that's where I'm stuck right now. I'm like, who is working with the Juggalos? All right, then. ECW. Um, three time world tag team champion, one time TV champion, two time heavyweight champion, and a one time uh FTW champion. Bam Bam Bigelow, no, uh, Taz, no, won a tag team uh, title with Taz, though. Who won a title with Taz? I know, was it RVD? Nope, this no, person who? did win two with RVD, though. This motherfucker won. It, <laughs> I know. To, did Tommy? Don't tell me Tommy Dreamer won the NWA championship. No, it's not Tommy Dreamer. Oh, thank Jesus Christ. Um, my, I, my heart couldn't take that. My heart would not take that. Um, he was the second it. DCW Triple Crown champion. Mikey Whipwreck. No. No. Inducted into the Hardcore Hall of Fame in 2009. I don't. I want to say Sabu, but that's. I'm immediately telling myself no. It's you not take Sabu. Sabu. Is it? It is Sabu. Are you fucking kidding it's Sabu. me? 
<laughs> That's lit. I was literally saying that, and I was like, there was no way in hell, no way in hell, Sabu was fucking uh, NWA champion. Look at my dumbass. Yeah. Did he win that shit in in, uh, in TNA? No, he was in uh, NWA Florida. Oh wow! Okay. And let me see if I can find the, the title change. I'm just because that's that's the one that threw me off because I was like, oh yeah, it sounds like Sabu, but he didn't win no goddamn NWA champ. That's the thing. That's the thing about Guest the Wrestler. It's literally you could get all these clues that direct you straight here, and then one's gonna go. And that was like the second you said that, especially when you brought up the Florida part, I had to start thinking the back when they actually were doing uh, NWA all over the place. But I forgot they kept that Florida one going for a minute, minute. Yeah. Yeah, man, can't even find it. Uh, let's sort alphabetically. But I mean, yeah, that's goddamn Sabu champ all over the place. Good for him. I know he was like a one, yeah, he was a one time IWGP junior champ. I knew that. Um, I think he was the only dude in EC dub that won belts in Japan. Oh, at least in IWGP, at least in New Japan, I mean. Why are you not showing me his reign? I thought I put this shit in alphabetical order. Because uh, they want you to forget about it because of the juggalos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. That's a fucking idiot. What the fuck? Down the rabbit hole we go. All right, uh, let's go to online world of wrestling. They always show the title histories. <laughs> there you go. Show me some Sabu. Um, all right, NWA World Heavyweight title in the year 2000 defeated Mike Rapata. Why does Mike, even Mike Rapata sound like a name that I've heard before? <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, for... there it is. Now I see it. Oh, yeah, I was on a house show. Oh, shocker. It's popping, popping the crowd, I see. Okay, I see you there in Dubai, Florida, popping crowds. So, there we go. Sabu uh, was the... What else we got did I say? He, he won a match of the year in TNA in 2005. That was um, his barbed wire massacre match against Abyss. Oi. Fun stuff, though. I heard he did good in TNA. Yeah, they they pretty much just tried to recreate ECW Sabu, just barbed wire matches here and there. Fuck it. Can't really go wrong with that. Consider me broken, but don't consider me beaten. I don't think anybody famous said that. I think I just made it up, but it sounds good either way. Travis the Walker Anderson, <clears throat> our new Max Wrestling World Champion. Congratulations. Not only are you the new World Champion, but you did what you set out to do. You destroyed the jury. You uh, took Corey. Should have seen that one coming, to be honest with you. And you beat down Chad, and you took my world title. Nice, nicely played. But you see, the jury may be gone, but that doesn't mean you don't have an enemy to deal with. 
The jury may be gone. The jury may be ashes, much like your former house. But things rise from ashes. You killed one creation, but you made way for another. You see, that's what Draymond was trying to teach me a promo series. He was trying to teach me to let go of the world title because I didn't need it anymore. I did have a historic reign the second time around as world champion, but Draymond was right. I don't need it anymore. You clearly need it more than I do. So, what is it I need more than the world title? Well, I think that point has always been obvious. I need to be part of something. And you see what you did last week. And you see what you did last month at promo series was you brought people together. You made the bond between Chad and I stronger and we are all that's left of the jury. And together we form something new. Something fully Welsh. See, that was a mistake we made, bringing in Corey, Cypher. We brought in an outsider. We forgot that the most loyalty you can have comes from your home turf. So, I guess now the battle lines are drawn between Dragon Club and the modern day outlaws. And I guess the modern day outlaws consists of Travis to Walker Anderson, Cypher, and Moses Marquez, my very own co-host. Now, that's free. Dragon Club consists of the captain and the lawyer. That's two, except we do have a third guy. And if I can quote Tony Schiavone, who is the third guy? Trav, you should know, because you're the one responsible for him being part of Dragon Club. You're the one that brought him closer to his brothers. You're the one that made him realize to let bygones be bygones. We've had our history, no secret, but there's always been mutual respect. And when you need, when you need support, who do you turn to? You turn to your family. And that's why the third guy in Dragon Club is a phoenix. You see, here's the thing, Trav. You beat us down, but we're still here. Ama Ohid. And also, speaking of Phoenix, let's not forget, Trav, I still have some sway around here. So, you're the world champion. You need a challenger. But don't worry, like I said, I'm done with the world title for now. But you will have a challenger at Podcast Promo Rumble 8 on January 26th. It will be Travis the Walker Anderson defending the Max Wrestling World Championship against the one guy he has unfinished business with. The guy he attacked from behind a promo slam and tried to pin it on me. The guy who's now seen the light and has now joined forces with his blood once again, the Phoenix. Oh, but wait, there's more. Now, regardless of what happens with the world title at the Rumble, 
drive, you also have a match at Promomania. Because you see, like I said, I'm done with the world title for now, but I do have unfinished business with you and Corey, I have unfinished business with you. So, <clears throat> here's the historic part of the announcement because it will be a tag team promo exhibition. Travis Walker Anderson and Cypher representing the modern day outlaws versus the Phoenix and our common friend, the Shape. At Promo Mania, to crown the first ever match wrestling tag team champions. Like I said, we're still here. I'm out here. Welcome back to the Cap and Mo Show. We're here every single Thursday. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, wherever it is you may be joining us. Still to come, this week's Geek of the Week and the Best of the Week, Shit Marks Say. But first, let's see what's going down this week. Oi. Um, it's been a pretty newsworthy week. Um, capped off with the whole Mandy Rose stuff. So, sure. Like early in the week, we heard Sasha Banks, aka Mercedes Renato, um, will be wrestling at wrestle kingdom she will be wrestling at wrestle kingdom and and from the looks of it she's good she might even hang out in japan for a little bit sounds good um so obviously just two stories spun one this is it she's done with wwe two uh triple h is letting her work her dates before coming back they uh, according to sources they are far far apart on money yeah on money which does which not is- shock me not at all. I'm sure they're not trying to pay anybody right now. Vince is not there to just be like, yeah, 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 whatever. Just fucking pay her, you know. Just not make to sure mention, you got some on the side for me. You know what I mean? I'll give you some <laughs> side for it. But also, the reality is, is there's this lovely, um, I don't want to say rumor, but there's this lovely feeling right now that Papa H brought all these people back and they're underperforming. Yeah. Um, I mean, one or two I can kind of agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it's how you book them. Yeah, it, you guys are the one with the third hour that gets the lowest rating in the hit show's history. So, and I don't ever blame whoever's on that third hour. Just like nobody wants three hours of raw. That's that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's exactly you're dragging us out. But see, that's the thing. If you would go back to the two hour format, and every week we've got somebody new on television. There you yeah. go. I mean, we can garner. It's it's one of those things where you're like, oh, well, I was trying to watch because, you know, I really want to get further on this storyline. But, oh, hey, this story is really good. And I want to. And it's attention grabbers. Yeah. I mean, look at AEW. There's a constant rotation on Dynamite every week. Mox is always on Rampage. <laughs> facing I mean, he's somebody. him and uh, him and B drive become like the kings of Rampage, which yeah. is nice. You know, now it's getting that. See, they're using star power to garner attention on, you know, on another platform, on their yeah. other channel. And that's a good thing because now you get viewers there. I mean, I think that's been the idea for a while. Like, put as much star power as you can on Rampage, get people to watch Rampage. I keep saying all this big stuff keeps happening on Rampage. And yeah, yeah, it's on at stupid o'clock. Yeah. But you'd think they'd like make more effort on Dynamite to promote rampage not just like hey this match is happening and this match happened like show some highlights something yeah i think yeah for sure it, build a story in like that's what they were starting to do uh tonight or last night's episode is they were building stories leading in and they and they do okay with it 
But now we've got stars, and we have known stars going. But, you know, B Drive is going to be there. Mox is going to be there. Sam, Sammy's going to be there. And now you get to understand the 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 story going on with him and Danny Garcia. That gets to be, get built on Rampage. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's good. You're you're making us have to catch it. Now, here's the good thing: Are you going to use it in video packages to catch us up? You should. Mm-hmm. Because like, it's, it's okay way. just passing comment like. Somebody beat somebody on Rampage last week. If you show some highlights, like the quick video package, people go, oh, shit, maybe I'll go back and watch that match. Or maybe I should start watching Rampage. Exactly. Not that hard. I know, I know it's late, but there's always VOD. I mean, you're not wrong there. Um, but as far as underwhelming people on SmackDown or Raw goes, uh... Maybe Hit Row is one of them. I've seen a lot of people mention haven't really hit any f- money. But let's keep it real. They were money with Swerve. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, they came I, back I, about the leader. Exactly. I I like them. It's you know, that's not true. I like AJ Francis is my man. That's the guy I'm leaning on. I like him the most. Um, I, I honestly, he's like the only guy I think that could that could stay. Could. And that's and that's being nice. And if he does stay, he's got to go back to NXT. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, player. You got to. Um, Karrion Cross, I think, is probably one as well. <sighs> but is it him or is it the booking for that one? You know what I mean? Because that because he was he's beloved somehow, mm-hmm. some way. For for not being as I don't want to say as pushed as he as he should be, but I mean we expected so much out of this dude. But people were talking world championship reigns. You know what I mean? As soon as Roman loses, this guy's on to the moon. He's gonna beat this dude. But, uh... For for me, it's the look. I don't like the greaser look. Like when he, I don't the killer cross that we all know from TNA and NXT. The bald guy, the demonic guy, works so much better. Yeah, it's much more intimidating. But then the whole slick back hair and leather jacket and stuff doesn't quite match the entrance. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. But I mean, I don't understand. I don't get it. Why is it they have to fucking ch- adapt? I'm not I can't use the word change. I'm sure I'll get fucking sued or whatever. But why do they have to adapt to the, the, the fucking main? I under like, I mean, yes, the guy you brought the dude back. I get that. You know, but I would tell him, like, hey, bro, like, I need you to come back as this guy. You know, I need you to be this. I need you to be the killer that you were in NXT, the guy that would, you know, hit people with the Saito suplex. And, oh, my God, there's his fucking brains busted and you're going to choke him out. And no, instead, you you look like a dude. And, and all, and I'm going to say it like this because this is what we got. You know what I mean? I, Mandy got fired because she made too much money. Women like your hair. Women think you're sexy. We need to have that out. Because that's yeah. what's going to sell women to want to turn on the television. We understand your hot wife. Your hot wife is going to is going to get all the attention we need. But now you're going to help us get women's attention. I mean, like, I'm not saying you're reaching, but you're you were reaching. You were reaching. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, who else? Been, I, I think Johnny Gargano is doing okay. He's pretty relevant with the Miz. Uh, yeah. And Dexter Loomis. <laughs> I like Dexter so much. So I, I can't really think of many others that have been underwhelming. I, I that Triple H brought back anyway. I want to say like damage control, but they had gotten you know they little momentum steps. You know what I mean? Little steps, <sighs> little steps. The biggest problem with damage control is they they like the definition of fifty fifty booking, and it sucks. Yeah. Yeah, You're t- <laughs> yeah, dude. You don't allow them to get any momentum behind them, and they are desperate for it. Yeah, desperate. Like, right after they, they came together, I think they lost a match within a couple of weeks. Yeah, I th- yeah, hey, it sounds right. And like, Which is, does make sense? Oh, okay. You got Bailey um, in the title picture, and you've got. Dakota and EO messing around with the tag team titles, but those things are hot potatoes. And Bailey didn't win the title, so where's the momentum? 
I'm looking forward to, bud. So, you know what? I I think maybe this is just dirt sheets speculating. I don't think Triple H is that disappointed. Like, he knows what they're capable of. He worked with them all in NXT. If there's something wrong, he can fix it. He should be able to fix it. Should be able to. So, but the, yeah, I'm I'm with that. I but then again, I'm also. Are we really jumping to that point? And it's only been so long. Yeah, I mean, what? December, has, so. has it has it has it been even six months yet? No, it's like four months that he's been in full control. Oh, then don't then then fucking pump the fucking brakes. <laughs> Calm down. And I'm again the for the for the ones who are already on the oh well he's the fucking AEW guy from TikTok or whatever then yeah that's fine call it call it what it is but you gotta fucking let it marinate you can't oh uh, four months has gone by da-da. so we're gonna give him the old man treatment we're gonna give him the VK treatment no give it time give it time yeah um, as far as Asha Banks goes. If if she's not coming back to WWE, that that's a big loss. It's huge. It's I know huge. I said on, on Facebook and stuff that, oh, it doesn't surprise me. She's a prima donna. But at the same time, her popularity cannot be denied. She has every right to be with her kind of popularity. I hate to say it yeah. like that. I hate to say it like that because it, it, nobody should be allowed to be a prima donna for any damn reason. But yeah. Does, does she does she get upset and walk out when she doesn't get her own way? Yeah, sure, she's a bit of a brat, but people love her. She's a big name. But but then again, she she understands her worth. Yeah. What's what's the old saying? Uh, I I took the chance. I gambled on myself, and she's gambling on herself. And guess what? It's paying off. That she's going to go to the biggest wrestling event outside of the United States. And I wouldn't want to say main event it, but this is the first time they have women in it. Mm. This is going to be the first year they have women in it. And guess who's coming? Yo, uh, the up. woman who made history like this before. First, like women pay-per-view main events. First women's hell in a cell. First this and that. First Iron Woman match. And, and for those nerds in the IWC, they're going to be like, well, she wouldn't have been there without the E. You're a thousand percent right. Now she's going to take all that momentum and she's going to walk into Japan, baby. And y'all just get to sit there and be mad. Um, Another rumor going around, Brock Lesnar versus Gunther. Fucking give me it all. Take all (laughs) my money and, 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 and just take all the money. All the money. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You want to give me, you want to give the people, not just me. You want to give the people a Brock match that'll leave us salivating. This is it. I don't get if that means Brock wins the IC belt or fucking hey, let's go. Let's go. Either way, I'm happy. I don't give a fuck if Gunther wins, loses. This unless it is a total fucking squash, this is gonna be this would be so fun. I I was just saying I if Brock Lesnar wins the IC title, I won't even be mad. No. Because he's never won a mid card title before in WWE. No. And look, and, and look what we had to get to get it. We had to get a dude, and, and I'm sure they're gonna end up. They would end up stiffing each other at some point in this match, and they would no sell the dog mess out of it. Both men. But I mean, that, exactly. Brock's never won a mid card title. He was always, uh, um, what is it, uh, labeled the next big thing. And that's why he went straight for the world title and he deserved it. And he had that push and he had that momentum and everything worked for him. But if you just, cause now farmer Brock's the man. So now you went from him being the killer to he's now over, even though, Oh, he barely works, but he's over his shit because everybody loves farmer Brock. And you put farmer Brock in with another lovable person and people don't tell me people don't love Gunther or Guther. Mm. They love him. Okay. Whether you want to believe it or not, you love his style, you love his look, you love everything about him. You give me this at Mania. You give the people this at Mania. Yes, thank you for finally putting an IC title match on when it matters. And thank you for finally making one matter. Because that's exactly what this would be. A IC title match that matters. Now, yeah, so uh, Brock came in in the April, I think, 2002. 
Within two months, he was king of the ring. Two months after that, he won the, the world, the WWE That's title. Right. And I was gonna say, I was like, he won king of the ring first. Uh, yeah, uh, that was the one and only time they've done king of the ring winner gets a WWE title match. Okay, and then they finished the pay per view. No more king of the ring pay per views. No more. King- Oy. flippy flop. We, we already got that stipulation for the rumble. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but this is a tournament, and it makes king of the ring mean something after what nine it does. years. Yeah, it's true. Now it's not just a crown and a gimmick. And they've oh. tried to bring it back random years, but it's just, it's not the same. Trademarks of trademarks are in King and Queen of the Ring, so yeah. We'll see how it Hopefully, goes. we get the pay per views back, and we can sort of get the King of the Ring name back to what it should be. Thank you. Give me a one night tournament. Oh, Give me yeah. a one night tournament. Come on, do it the right way. Damn it. What year was it? They did like. Even the quarterfinals and everything. There was like 18 matches in one night on the pay-per-view. I want to say it was in the 2000s. It may have been 2000. I want to say like 2000, 2001 maybe. Because I it had it had so many fucking names in it. Yeah. And that was during the time when it was just name after name after name. I saw the size of the brackets on an episode of Raw. I was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. That thing grew. Um. So yeah, that that's one match rumored for Mania, which I'm all for. Um, Oscar seems to be teasing a Kana like gimmick, and those who aren't familiar with Karma, uh, Kana, it's a very hey. very evil Oscar. About to say yeah, yeah. You thought you thought she was evil the way she just hit and kicked and chopped the shit out of you, but uh, Kana in Japan was, for lack of better words, feared. Mm. Feared. So I mean, this Connell was known. Now this is now this is this is the Oscar people should love. Kana was not only evil, but this was the same one that would beat the dog mess out of grown men. Grown men. Kana was Kana was the one that was going up against Minero Suzuki, up against Murder Grandpa, getting chopped by him and shit. Yeah. So the. the I don't know how fully you can go with it. I don't know, especially now. I don't know. It, it should absolutely catch. It should absolutely catch fire. It should be momentum, you know, for her. But it's how far are they going to take it? How can you book it right? It's the question here. If anybody can, I think it's Triple H. I would hope so. He he put her um, on a killer run in NXT. Yeah, I, yeah, that's that's the Oscar we need, and that that wasn't even like full on Kana. <laughs> exactly. So that's um, the thing: you allow her to be her as far as that character, and you book her like the old. I did it for you. I'll see a check in the mail. Thank you. Like I ne- never would have trusted Vince with this gimmick. Look at look Every how he screwed years. up Broken Matt. Good. And and I hate and I'm gonna say it, no, and, and everybody knows my hatred for Matt Hardy right now. But you took, like, the hottest, like, the hottest fucking thing outside of your company. But that wasn't, like, a name, Okada or Kenny Omega. And you literally had it right there. And and you bought all the rights and all the bullshit. And you fucking even took the producers from fucking Impact to, to have them do the thing. And it was a, a pathetic attempt. To say the least, pathetic. It was, par- it was a parody. Oi. And a terrible one at that. Uh, and then he, even AEW, too, they almost gave us Broken Matt and they just kind of changed their minds. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Uh, I, I don't fucking know. But yeah, that was the hottest commodity outside of WWE and. One of the biggest things Impact had done in years. Oh yeah, a thousand percent, man. Like he himself was bigger than Impact for that like year. He really run. was. He made you want to watch Impact. He made you pay attention to Impact. I know I was. I wasn't again, and I was I'm not a DNA guy, but I was like, God damn it, these bastards are getting over again. This shit is funny. Um, I thought it was kind of dumb at first, but then the fucking Lake of Reincarnation oh. killed me. It fucking kills me every time. I don't give a shit. That, 
that uh that final deletion match the first like cinematic match mm-hmm. um i've never seen so many people tweet post talk about a match and impact in so long right i was gonna say i was like it talk just about blew up the ultimate attention grabber the ultimate goddamn senior benjamin was over like a son bitch okay <laughs> when you got the goddamn gardener over like a motherfucker come on now um final bit of wwe before we move on to aw um of course matt riddle sent to rehab after failing another drugs test and i like how they have to point out that wwe doesn't test for marijuana because that's what everyone would assume with riddle but no it was um apparently cocaine and mdma my man oh, got my. a porn star girlfriend since he's now single or uh, whatever and he out here just partying. Like, come on, dog. What are you doing? Like, I'd, I'm just disappointed. But here's the, here's the gimmick. Why are we firing him? Yeah. We're not talking about weed. We're talking MDMA and we're talking coke. So why ain't we firing him? Well, that was the deal, wasn't it? Like, so I think his first drugs test was before SummerSlam, and that's why the match got canceled. And they pretty much said, if you fail another one, it's either fired or rehab. So he's gone to rehab. Oh, fuck out of here! So fucking floppy, but, floppy on shit. It's ridiculous. In in retrospect, looking back on those tweets from Seth Rollins and Triple H, it all makes sense. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> fuck, it really does. Damn riddle. Um, all right, AEW then. Um, Death Triangle make it three and one against the Elite, thanks again to the Hammer. So after the match, Kenny Omega decides to raise the stakes for match number five and make it no DQ. Love it. No DQ is what they need. I mean, um, I did love the way Kenny pointed out. He's like, if anybody knows in sports a three one deficit, he's like, it's normally, you know, like the end all be all. He's like. But then there's those comeback stories. Personally, personally, I was saying they should have went th- um, they should have went three oh first. It should have been Death Triangle mm-hmm. going three oh. And then that way they can have a straight four four run comeback, kind of like the Yankees and the Red Sox, even though I'm a Yankee fan, obviously. But the, I, I it was one of the greatest stories ever in sports, okay? Regardless of my team getting ass beat or not. <laughs> it was one of the greatest stories ever. But yeah, now we got a no DQ match for next week. Um, I believe match six is going to be a regular match. And then the match in LA is going to be, uh, was it a, I think it's a ladder match. Yeah. Escalado de muerte. There you go. It's, Whatever it is. It's fucking a goddamn de- ladder death match. Yeah. Goddamn ladder match. Shit. Um, I like that it's three and one because again, like the elite have to have a straight flush now, but oh, yeah. they've also got that one win that makes you think, okay, maybe there is a chance. Absolutely. There's a chance. You can tell me these guys are going to go three, three, and they're going to lose in LA. They're going to lose in LA. I mean, oh, it's it, going it, to match seven. I'm going to say if, even if the writing is on the walls and that's fine, it can be. And, and the marks out there can get all butthurt about it because they're not telling a story, but they are, they are in every fucking match. There's a story, every single one. And the first one, Phoenix didn't want to cheat and they did. And he's pissed off that they cheated. And he's mad at himself for cheating. And then the second one, they keep going, and he's still upset at himself. And and then the and then when they finally and then of course the elite won one. And now this one, he's you have to pay attention to the little things. I'm sorry. I know that's a that's an unfortunate thing. You want your wrestling to literally come out and tell you this is how you feel. No. You be if you want to get that invested, this is what you're gonna end up finding out. You're gonna find out this is how it works. And looking at at Phoenix's face, he's still upset that why are we having to cheat to win? Yeah. And now, and now, now we pissed off Kenny. Now he wants to cheat. Now we want to have a no DQ match. So that should immediately tell you that you're going to get a number two. And then that should make Phoenix. I'm guessing this is my booking right here. TKL expect my check. I'm thinking Phoenix is going to be the one that costs them the other one to make them go even. Yeah. And then it is, we're literally at the best team win scenario. And in yeah. LA, you're going to get the biggest pop you can possibly get for the elite. Makes sense. And like you said, people saying there's no story. Kenny literally said in this promo, oh, you used a hammer again. 
Exactly. And that was and that is where we're at. It's at the point of, okay, now you guys want to be you guys want to be meticulous. You want to make sure that this is how we're going to do. We have to cheat to win. Then let's see you let's see how much cheating you need in an ODQ match. Um also on Dynamite, Jeff Jarrett's still on TV. <sighs> he's not only on TV still, he's gonna fucking wrestle. That that Why? segment was just like so over and done. I was like, what was the point? Look, just to I, get Jeff Jarrett on TV. I hate Jeff Jarrett. I hate this cat with a passion. He's on my hated list right there next to fucking Nick Patrick. Okay. But I gotta give credit where it's fucking due. And and all my credit's going to the crowd in Houston. It wasn't gonna go to Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't gonna go to Jeff Jarrett. Don't don't get excited. There's somebody right now throwing their their phone. Damn you, you should have given me credit. He he is an excellent heel at what he's doing, but Houston put him the fuck over. Yeah. To hell. Houston put everybody over. What the hell am I talking about? Houston was what the best crowd all year long. Oh, they were incredible. Um, especially in the next match. Um no, not the next match. In Jericho's match later on. Um so before we get there, he tells this fucking oh, God. interview segment. Uh, Danny Garcia that he needs some advice and some guidance after losing the pure title. So he has to uh, shadow his elder, Sammy Guevara. I laugh so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen this coming. I've seen it coming. I said there's only one way. There's only one way to truly, and I hate to say it like this, but we got to say it like this, push Danny Garcia back out of the Jericho Appreciation Society is with the help of Sammy. Because yeah, everybody wants to punch Sammy in the face. That, that's another one. That story's not over. We thought, oh, Danny Garcia is declared for JAS uh, over Blackpool Combat Club, so that story's over. But no, he's still conflicted. He is still conflicted, and and Sammy is about to push his confliction the fuck that way. Get the hell out of here. Oh well, if anybody's gonna push your buttons, it's uh, Sammy Guevara. <laughs> Which is everybody's butt, that fucker. Um, but in Jericho's match against Action Andretti, um. Uh, an upset, upset uh, to gets say the win over least. Jericho. But I think the the turning point in the match was that reaction to him kicking out of the cold breaker was insane. Oh, it was huge! Like the the and the and to me, what started this one was we. If we go back to that backstage segment just before Jericho had had this whole thing going with Danny Garcia and with with Sammy Guevara, he says, "Tonight I have a match against a jobber." And Houston says, jobber, let go <laughs> jobber. And they fucking, they, they got so much momentum behind this kid. It they was did. fantastic. Um, the match to me, and I, and I'm going to say this cause I, I'm, I'm going to start calling myself a historian. I swear to God, I've seen this match before. Um, and for those who are like, what the hell are you talking about? I want you to go back to 1996. Uh, I want to say October. I can get in. I don't have an actual date. Rey Mysterio versus Chris Jericho. Minus a couple of things. I think the finish came from the one, two, three kid. But uh, it was uh, most of this match was uh, was if I'm not mistaken, Rey Mysterio and Chris Jericho. And then the finish ended up being the one from one, two, three kid. But it, no, he ended up getting a cradle. So never not. But that's the thing. He said he was going to be a star maker. I mean, this kid's been on, he's been on Rampage, he's been on Dark, but good for him. He's yeah. signed now, he's all elite, he got momentum up the ass. Um, I have no idea if he's going to, like, be a thing now, or if he just, you know, hey, good win, congratulations, welcome to the roster, you're not going to get your ass beat. Oh, I we'll hope see. he's uh, going to be a thing after that momentum. I think the, uh, the inside cradle was the false finish near the end there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um... But yeah, after that kick out, Jericho took out his frustrations, which only fueled the fan support for Andretti. Exactly. Um, like was it? <clears throat> just said that this is how you make a future star. Absolutely. Was so behind him, and Jericho did so many favors for him to make him oh. look good um, <clears throat> and draw the heat from the crowd. But Jericho is a star maker, man. I think, or I may have noticed. Like Andretti obviously was holding holding his back. That was bothering him a little bit in the near the end there. And a couple of moves almost missed. But mm -hmm. perfect running shooting star press. 
Oh yeah, uh, got the surprise Cute. win. Mad, mad impressive. This kid, mad, mad impressive. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we see more of Action Andretti. Please and thank you. Um, and hopefully Jericho can just keep making young stars like this. I'm sure he can. Just like he's, Vince, he's Jericho is a heat magnet. Guy. Well, not only is he a heat magnet, but he knows how to work with everybody right now. Yeah. And for a guy as old as he is, that tells people that tells a lot. And that's a great thing. So he's, I mean, but the, you also got to look at it too. He's helped make people before. You mm. know what I mean? Punk was already over. He helped make Punk again in AEW. Let's keep that funky. Um, he helped make MJF. He helped make um, who, uh, Orange Cassidy. You guys like to big Orange Cassidy out after that goddamn dumbass feud? He is a star maker. Yeah. Uh, I think Jericho is like the ultimate veteran right now. Now that The Undertaker's retired. He Jericho's is. seen and done it all, and he knows how to work with anybody, like you just said. And, he, and again, he's going to help m- elevate you. I was going to say make you. No, he's going to elevate you. Wherever you are on the card, Jericho is an elevator. That's what he I, the Motherfucker, you ain't the Ocho no more. You're the elevator. Yeah. I hope Jericho is a lifer in AEW. Um, I know he was. he went through WWE for years and years and years. He was a WWE guy. But he's got so much to offer that locker room in AEW. So, like, when he finally retires, he stays on as a producer or a trainer or whatever. Yeah. Preferably both. Yeah. Preferably both. Just don't take, you ain't got to take the bumps to, 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 to coach, but, you know. Um, you. So, in Jungle Boy versus Brian Cage, despite <sighs> tapping out behind the ref's back and trying to take advantage, Brian Cage... Uh, takes the L to Jungle Boy. Way to make a storyline geek out of Jungle Boy. <laughs> Why would you do that? Like, you, Brian Cage was dominant because he's the big, strong guy, which is fine. It's slow as shit for being, you know, 5'9", 300 pounds. But slow, whatever. But my whole thing is, is you have this visual. I don't, I hate the visual thing. The visual thing is meant for like, uh, I don't know, a, a different instance. This didn't need to be that. I mean, I understand you want to keep Cage looking strong, but you could have did that. It's Jungle Boy's snare trap is the snare trap. There's just, it's no real beating it. You know what I mean? He got caught. It is what it is. Brian Cage was dominant the entire time and he just ended up tapping. It is what it is. But instead that happens, there's the misconstrued. And then it was one of the shittiest roll-ups I've ever seen. So yeah. it made everybody look bad in the end. And it could have literally just gone home with the tap. And I mean, does it make Cage look a tad bit weaker? Yeah. I mean, in all reality, yeah. But I know I just fucking said the second ago and nobody would look weak, but it it would have been better off. Yeah. Because if you want something to come with Jungle Boy, you took him from here. And then, oh, we fucked it up. So you gotta, you're got immediately bringing it back down. You're immediately bringing it down. Yeah. Cage just cannot get any momentum going. It's unfortunate. Um, it is. But, I mean, that, it's, it, it can't come at the expense of Jungle Boy. It can't. They need no. to try to re-elevate Jungle Boy. What the fuck they're doing with him. I mean, now they're going to try. Now they're going to try, especially with his new found partner. Mm. But yeah, this match was disappointing even for, even for Jungle Boy after the cage match. I know yeah. momentum came out with that one. But yeah, like you said, he, he calls out <laughs> Big Bill. <laughs> calls him w. This, the biggest new name. bitch of the, uh, them all. And I don't know who in the hell TK. Mm-mm, mm-mm. This is why. Why can't what? What W Morris? We can't. I mean, maybe that's it. And by impact or whatever, that's fine. Whatever. I don't give a shit. But Big Bill, it instantly reminds me of a sitcom we've got over here called Black Books. Nice. Um, so there's an episode about getting into gambling debts, and two of them decide they're gonna win the money back by pretending to be New York tourists. So they go into the game and they're like, hey, hey, we've been walking around all day trying to find that big clock tower, you know, Big Bill. (laughs) 
<laughs> Just instantly, that's what <laughs> I think of when I hear Big Bill. Oh, uh, shit, pop me out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Big Bill and Lee Moriarty attack Jungle Boy uh, after he gets into it with Stokely. Send Hook to the rescue. Then hook to the rescue, boy. And, uh, and that's the thing that kills me. You're going to be, your name is Big Bill, and you ran from the littlest dude in the rost on the roster. Right? Hook gets in the ring, the whole ring clears. They were like, nope. He's oh, like five like, foot nothing. <laughs> he's like, but, yeah, I mean, come on. He's the littlest. I understand, like, his, you know, his his presence, you know what I mean? He's meant to be this closet killer. I like that term, the closet yeah. killer. But he come on. You can't have a fucking dumbass name like Big Bill and run from Little Hook. <laughs> that's what that's what made this, like, that's why I was disappointed with this segment. And it's mainly because of the goddamn name change. Like, it, it makes me feel like we're back in the 90s. Yeah. Like he is gonna be relevant for a little bit, and then be the guy that you beat. He, you're gonna. This is the giant you beat on your way to the fucking title. Like what? What was wrong with W. Marcy? I guess I'm just saying. I'm hoping it's like a legality thing. But again, you got to If you ch- like Big Bill, really, Big Bill. <laughs> it just Yikes. it sounds stupid every time you hear it. It does. Worse. Um. But yeah, with Hook being so small, they they beat down Jungle Boy, who I think is bigger than Hook. He is. And then ran away from Hook. <laughs> oy, oy. Um, But House of Black looked great. Um, Julia's really come into this dark role. Um, yeah, she has. Did a little stare down before the match. Nick Camarado thinks he's Scott Hall. Like, literally the exact same mannerism. Um, and thankfully gets the mist in his face for his troubles. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> So you fucking get. Well, don't fuck with Julia. No, um, she's. I'm. I'm loving her character. Loving yeah. it. She. She's killing it. And House of Black just killed the factory. Those geeks. I I mean, they, they didn't even announce their names. They were just like, and their opponents, the factory. Okay, but who? Who? Don't fucking worry about it. That's who. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It does exactly. <laughs> it don't matter. Um. So that that was a squash match. Uh, we go backstage again. Britt Baker is interrupted by Cora Jade. Wait, no, sorry. I'm being told that was Sky Blue. Um, so we get that match tomorrow. <laughs> they look the same. They do. I literally Jesus. did a double take when she came on screen. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, Teddy yelled that. He says, is that Cora Jade? <laughs> I died. I think died. even Britt kind of made that joke. Subtly, when she went, wait, was that sky blue? That was sky blue, right? <laughs> it looked the same, same fucking like punk rock gimmick thing. Yeah, and they literally had like the same eyes, same hair, same facial structure, everything. Like they could be twins. They could, they absolutely could be. You could flip them on television one day and not change their names. And I bet you money we wouldn't notice. Bet money. Twin, twin magic. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Um, I mean, obviously, Britt's going to win tomorrow, but um, it's nice to see Sky Blue doing a little something. She She's had a few appearances, but done very little in between. So, yeah, uh, let's see if she's moving up in the ranks. And then finally, of course, main events. It was a foregone conclusion, but it was a nice showing for Starks. Yeah, great showing. Uh, very, this, again, Max is the king of... The new kid doing old school matches, and this was great. Uh, they never gave Ricky like the, the, there was never a chance where you were like, ah, Ricky's gonna win. Which I, I thought like you could have given us one, yeah. but it's okay. I mean, we we you know we know it's up. Uh, he, I did he, not he, expect Bree Dry though. No, that was my surprise. I mean, we knew we were gonna get it eventually, um, but like not right at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. You just. Expect MJF to celebrate his win, move on to the next week, and then in comes Danielson. But um, we didn't even get any physical contact or anything. MJF just runs for the hills. Okay. But, he, man. He fucking drop kicked that goddamn guardrail open to fucking run. I died laughing. 
Um, so much credit to Bidry though because his facial ex- expression looked like he wanted to fucking kill MJF. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I can't uh, wait for this. But then, then that brings the fucking question: Does Max's reign end because we finally need to do something with Bidry, or is Bidry? Or is this B Dry's like last run? You know what I mean? Because there was there's already talk of him taking time off. Well, next pay per view, I think, is it January Revolution or is have we got to Revol- wait till March? I want to say Revolution. Yeah, but is it January? Or, I think it's March actually. So we got to wait till then for the next right. pay per view. Um, if that's the case, MJF gets a good few months as champion. If not, then they've got to find some way to somehow make it not about the title. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to do that. Unless, like, MJF wrestles twice. That's fine. I'll defend the title, and then I'll fight B-Dry. I'm down. Or make him do that or something. I don't know. I mean, we can... They'll figure something. I'm hoping they can figure something out. I'm just... I'm at the point where we know B-Dry's got to go away. He's he's tired, you know what I mean? The guy needs some rest. He's beat up. But are we going to give him anything before he does? Anything. Maybe, and TK, you can send me a check too. Um, maybe MJF beats Brian the same way he knocked out Regal from behind. Uh, Brian goes away for a few months, then he comes back and beats MJF for the title. So that gives MJF a good long run, and we also keep this story going. It would be a great pop for him coming back too. I like that a lot. That, that could that could work awesomely. TK, you know where to find me. Hey, yeah, the boy. <laughs> Um, and that, that, that's pretty much dynamite. It's it was a great episode for winter is coming. Like somebody said, it's free for free for winter is coming. I agree. There wasn't as mm-hmm. many like big surprises as usual, but it was a solid episode. Absolutely. Um, and all the news was in friggin WWE this week. Yes, so. it's true. That's true. Um, Every, everything about AEW was great. And there was a lot of question marks for WWE. Yeah, and there was probably a few options for this, but let's find out who was this week's Geek of the Week. Pencil neck geek, gritty freak, scum sucking beard with a lousy physique. He's a one man, no cut, losing streak. Nothing but a pencil neck geek. Pencil neck geek. All right, so like the list was. The list was long for this week. I wanted to I wanted to follow up, maybe go IWC again. Um, I know for sure I was getting some vibes from uh, I was about ready to call Mandy Rose geek because, you know what I mean, the contract thing. But after like going through the Rolodex in my brain, a TikTok popped up and uh, <laughs> I don't understand how you lose credibility for somebody over your own actions and all they did was talk about them so and yeah i'm gonna get some heat the guys in the picture behind me i'm talking rick flair this week he went on uh his his son-in-law's podcast comrade uh thompson and uh he basically said that he lost all credibility for jim ross because of his uh what he said on uh dark side of the ring pretty much about the plane ride from hell Mm. but in none of that, in none of that did Rick ever take responsibility for anything that he may or may not have done. Um, he didn't portray himself as somebody who is remorseful for anything he may or may not have done. He quite literally just said, you know, what you said was bullshit, which isn't, I'm, pro- I'm, I'm sure, not true. But here's my thing, dude. If you feel some type of way, then why wouldn't you feel some type of remorse for what you did or didn't do? I mean, I don't know. I, I Again, if you want to play this thing. And again, everybody knows where I am with Flair, okay? But for me, this is that one where I was already upset at what had went down from when I've seen the episode. Yeah. And the fact that there's no... Um, he didn't clear it up. He didn't, you know, try to go into protection mode and say this and this and this. And so it sat and the thing is there. And normally when that happens, it turns out to be true. But again, you're getting upset at a man for doing an interview. Truthfully. Truthfully. I mean, he was there. Exactly. 
That's and that's that's. It's not like he was an. It's not like he was hearing about this from the boys after the. He had to basically be your guys' goddamn chauffeur. <laughs> you know, he was your he was your mommy and daddy on the plane, if you will. You know, and it that sucks. That sucks. And unfortunately, he got put in a corner, and he's not going to lie about what went down. But yeah. at the same time, he wasn't turning around taking responsibility for it. He was trying to be like, dude, I need help back here. He went to Vince and them and said, we need help. You figure it out. So he's a one man against a bunch of belligerently drunk, grown ass, super strong men with egos up to fucking the here, bud. That's what you expect him to do. Let's not also forget Ric Flair actually got JR fired at one point because he showed up to the video game reveal drunk. Mm, mm-hmm. JR took the heat because he was the uh, head of what talent relations? Yes, head of talent relations. So again, who are you to be getting fucking pissed off at somebody for not their actions? And I was singing Rick's praises this week too for that dumbass TikTok girl <laughs> trying to get a video. I know, yeah, last even week she didn't that know was who great. he was. That was great. Good for him. I appreciate you, Rick. But yeah, dude, you go from like, hey, all right, to why in the fuck in a week? Oh, Rick. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you could be a geek several weeks, to be honest. Like, just retire, Rick. Just, just, just stop. Go into the shadows, big <laughs> dog. Um, so now for the bestler of the week. And spoiler alert, it's a double. Um, I picked them both yesterday, actually. So one, uh, based on an incredible match. First time I've seen him. It wasn't his debut, but the first time I've seen him. um, Action Andretti, star-making match against Jericho. Crowd was super into you. Congratulations on that. Um, Again, like I said, hope hope we see more of you on Dynamite. And Mm -hmm. second... This isn't like just because she got fired, but because um, she dropped the title to uh, Roxanne on NXT ahead of schedule. Mm-hmm. And so that immediately said, oh, something's going on. And she okay. just had such a great send off from the fans who mm-hmm. didn't even know anything was up at this point. Like, none of anything being leaked had made it into the dirt sheets yet. It was, nope. it was just like, okay, random, random, she's dropped the title, what's going on? Yeah, everybody was like, oh, man, they're just, they're finally just pulling the plug. They're just pulling the plug. And it's like, oh, no, you know, and it, it was, so yes, it was like a nice little send-off. But then all this stuff pops up, and now it's like, ay. So, but then so again, th- y'all motherfuckers knew about her shit. Yeah. So this is mostly for passing the torch to Roxanne, for having a killer reign for over 400 days, uh, for having a great final match in NXT, and basically for support. Hey, go, Even though it's not going to be much right coming now. from us. Uh, second best of the week goes to Mandy Rose. Hey, my hat's off to you, girl. Do your thing. Uh, now, on New Year's Eve this year, we present the 2022 Maxis Awards. This is the one time of year that we award the very best of wrestling in the past 12 months. And also the one time of the year that you get to vote on what matches you want to see from us. Who do you want to see challenge Cypher for the Max Wrestling Television Championship? Will it be The Lawyer, Chad Malcolm, The Straight Shooting, Daniel Crimmins, or The Podcast Machine himself, Mike Larkin? Plus, who will challenge the knowledge champion, Kenny Killer? Your choices are the two-time, the official two-time champion, the man known as Beer, the captain himself, or the only ever five-time knowledge champion, the man they call the Phoenix. You can vote on all of these and more at maxwrestling.net forward slash maxis. Voting closes next week. Get to it now. And thank you to those who have already voted. Yeah. Uh, I should also say, too, it's two-minute champion beer. Sorry, beer. That, two-minute that, champ. The official that's not a two-minute great champ. nickname to have. I but... don't rock the shit out of it, beer. The official two-minute <laughs> champ. Get it right. 
Um, but that's not all. As you heard during the break at Podcast Promo Rumble 8, coming your way January 26th, it will be the Phoenix challenging Travis Walker Anderson for the Max Rosson World Championship. For more information on that, go to maxrosson.net slash rumble8. Rumble. Wow, we're on eight year of special events. Damn. Um, and now to close out the show for stupid shit people say online, and I've got a feeling there's going to be a lot. This is shit Mark say. God damn. Tell me you did not just say that. Who the hell told you tonight was open mic night, bitch? Sit down, Marks. Names have been changed to protect their stupidity. Uh, I got a feeling there's going to be some Mandy Rose comments here, but has any, anybody not been very oozy on TikTok? Shockingly, there's been, it, for the Mandy Rose thing, it has been a lot of opinion based and no judgment. So I'm going to leave them cats alone. However, there are uh, uh, there's some cats out here who are very, what's the term that uh, the man, Daniel Bryan, that's what they used to call him, used to use a fickle. Got mm-hmm. some fickle motherfuckers. We go back to my man, Strawberry Candies, from back in the day, as we say. And um, I know we harped on the on the punk scrum and all this and that. But um, somebody is still salty that the elite are EVPs. And his exact words are, they should not be allowed to be EVPs. And my thing is, homie, you own the company? The, why is it? We get to judge on who the fuck can be an EVP in a company when we don't own the bitch. They did, were we mad that um, fucking Kevin Nash was booking himself and Hulk Hogan was booking himself in WCW, or we were just like, ah, it's fucking Nash and that's Nash and Hogan for you. That's because of Eric Bischoff. We were making excuses then. Don't worry about who's EVP. You you don't like the direction, the way the company is going, and you flipped on it because you were a dick writer from day one. And yeah, I'll say it like that because you were all about it, bud. You were all about this, and they can't do wrong that. And for about two and a half years, you were good. And then they started making those quote-unquote bad moves that made no sense to you because they're not making stars, but they are. Oh, well, they're not pushing anybody we don't know, but they are. Oh, well, this isn't anything better than WWE. Oh, but it is. But again... Y'all don't, y'all just don't want to see it. So that's one. And then the other one, and then uh, I'm going to call this man because you could find him on, on, on TikTok right now. No problem. And I don't want to, uh, if I gave out his name, it, it's going <laughs> to get ugly. So we're going to go with Kyle. It It's still real to me. That's his name. Kyle, it's still real to me. He goes on to say that he absolutely loved the match between uh, Santos Escobar and my man Ricochet, but then goes on in literally the same sentence to say, but I hate that flippy shit that AEW does. And your exact look was my exact look because how in the motherfuck? This is also the same man that says that this best of seven series between the elite and the death triangle have no story. <laughs> And it just, it makes me sit back and think, if you don't have a real understanding of what pro wrestling stories are, then why are you opening your mouth about it? I understand, like, I am, and I will, I will gladly say I have been invested for so many years that I can see stories from all different shapes and sizes. I've seen stories in the ring. I've seen stories told on microphones. I've seen stories told in the back. Uh, through fucking Instagram, wherever. I've seen every story possible that can be seen. And I understand that they come in all different shapes and sizes, and it matters on how you look at it. If you feel there's no story, it probably means you weren't paying attention. In every match, there's a story. Even in the E, they're dumb stories. But there's always a story because that's what this is. It is a story-based product. So when you say dumb shit, like there's no fucking story between, you know, Death Triangle and the Elite, I had, I, I, I've talked about it for weeks. Motherfucker, we on YouTube for free. For free. So come on, man. Come on, man. Going back to that first one, I, I, I want to know where this whole narrative comes from that an EVP can't wrestle. Like, we had the same with Cody. We've seen it with Triple H. 
Who cares? Can they still it, go? Yeah. Can they tell I a story? Yeah. Then what's the problem? I don't think it's that. I think it's more. I don't think it's the wrestling factor. I think it's more of the. Oh, well, they're only pushing their friends. Motherfucker. Most of their friends are indie darlings and cats from WWE. What? <laughs> like, bro, of course they're going to push people you don't know because you're not watching the indies. Like, I mean, it's. Ah. But like, again, what's the problem oh with that? They're, they're giving attention to indie darlings who you wouldn't know otherwise. Which. If Pentagon and Phoenix were not in AEW, you'd be clamoring for them to be because they did a little thing in Impact and they did their thing in AAA. Yeah. Which, by the way, that's if I'm gonna I'm gonna quick add a last minute geek, AAA. Oh yeah. God, I brought this up. Last minute geek. You are an official geek of the fucking year, the rest of the year, goddamn it, because you are you are denying you are denying a guy to get over in other countries. And that is absolutely fucking despicable. It's despicable. El Hilo del Verkingo is literally the best wrestler in AAA right now. And I will gladly mention that through through fucking through my nose. He's he's excellent. He's put on bangers with Phoenix, with Pentagon, with with Kenny Omega. And that's exactly where we're leading. We're leading to a Kenny Omega. He has a match uh, coming up against uh, Blake Christensen for GCW. But even if you bought that show, you can't watch it. Because they're blocking all pro- all U.S. promoters from streaming his matches. If you're there live, you can watch it, obviously. They can't deny you that. But they won't allow you to stream him. So... And the thing that kills me is for those that are unfamiliar, AAA is the same people that was running Lucha Underground. And we saw all the complications that came with Lucha Underground. Ricochet couldn't go to WWE because of these contract issues. He had to wrestle in Japan, which, I mean, granted, it was better for him. But they were literally blocking people from going places. And now they're blocking this kid from getting even Moreover, despicable. But I guess I guess Vince riders will love this. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um. All right. We on TikTok or on TikTok on Twitter we have. Um, we want meat men. Ugh ugh. That that's your first geek. Um, Fucking caveman. Got it. Says too, too much women's wrestling. It isn't a draw, folks, in the quantity we are getting it in. Every time I flipped over from the football game, there was a women's match or an interview. It's just not <laughs> popular and people are tired of it. <laughs> How stupid are you? <laughs> I go from the football game to this. Homie, of course, because you're catching shit in the middle of shit. I wouldn't be liking nothing either if I caught in the middle of it. Oh my god! And of course, if, of course, look who he's replying to. Fucking Wrestling Observer. Of course, he's replying to Wrestling Observer. <laughs> Everybody wants to go after Uncle Dave. Oh man. Um. You know what? Fine. The women don't quite draw as much as the men. Case in point, Evolution. Even though it was a solid pay per view. Um, yeah. But I don't think it's their fault. They're but they're working their asses off. They're entertaining. Often, I'm more invested in what the women are doing than the men, storyline wise. Um, and often I've said many times the women have some better matches when we have like women's matches versus men's matches, like rumble war games, whatever the women tend to have the better matches. Facts. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not, not, I'm not sorry actually, but you, you answered your own question. Why the ratings are low. It had nothing to do with women. It's because people like you were actually watching football and flipping back and two. Mm-hmm. And that's where that's where the problem lies. It's because you're coming in at the last minute and going, "Watch me judge this now." Yeah, no. Ra- ra- ratings always tank during the season. Common knowledge. That's like being a judge in a boxing match and missing the first eight rounds. <laughs> it makes no fucking sense. Well, he killed him in the last two. What? Where the fuck have <laughs> you been? <laughs> so you can get in the bin. Um, 
and and next up we have not very tranquilo club um Ooh, i'm actually very surprised at this one because that suggests to me that you're not a wwe bubblehead but clearly y- you are um i speak for the entire wwe universe when i say welcome back vince mcmahon we missed you love heart first of all vomit I think I actually did throw up in my mouth a little bit there. Um, second of all, I don't know about Tranquilo, but you're definitely in the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club. How the fuck you gonna rep the Tranquilo Club? Fucking goddamn the fucking Los Ingobernables. How the fuck you gonna run that bitch and you're gonna say something as stupid as this and at the same time have like 700 likes on the bitch? <laughs> Who in the fuck really wants this guy back? He literally, the rumor came out that he might come back. Allegations. Um, this go. Man, he's, 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 he's fucking his money away. He's yeah. fucking his money away. Going back to what you were saying about Nash and Hogan, when you were like, did people fit, just react like, oh, that's just Holland Nash for you. That's what they're like with Vince. When all these oh, allegations that, came out, ah, oh, that's just Vince for that's you. That's just Vince. That guy, that crazy Vince. Oh, he got you behind the water cooler? Ah, the bits will get you. I, I don't know how much more we need to spell it out. He embezzled millions and millions of company dollars on sex on the side. On <laughs> sex. Like, okay, yeah, he's a he's a he was a player, but he embezzled company money, millions of it. To to get his freak on. And not not for any like, you know, not for any capital gain. But to get it in. And in order to bankroll such things, he fired Mm, mm, dozens mm. and dozens and dozens of the wrestlers that you complained about getting fired. Mm, mm. Double standards, fickle. Double standards. The fickle fans, they is. Fucking people, fucking marks. They are marks and that's the shit they say. God damn it, get in the bin. Yeah, you definitely get in the bin. Put Vince McMahon in the bin, too, and then throw the fucking thing in the ocean. Yeah, don't poke no... And poke some holes in it, too, so it goes all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote Will Smith. The only way you can get to this motherfucker is you gotta be Jack Cousteau. Love it. Um, so there we go. Thank you for spending your first day with us. Before we go anywhere, here's what Moses has for you, Pencil Neck Geeks, this week on the A to B of Retro Rewind. SMR Podcast Network. You should be listening. All right. So Retro Rewind is coming back next week. Finals week is over as of this week. And then I have a lovely, I get a nine-day vacation uh, the week after, or I guess the day after Christmas. So I am going to be going hard to the paint on everything possible. I'm going to be trying to bust out as best as I can, maybe a retro a day. If not, for sure, we got to get everybody back on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash Big Mo 2425. I'm going to get back into the gaming mode. Um, we're going to play some fun stuff right now. I was uh, College Football Reloaded as a game I was jumping on the other day. Um, might just have a couple chat sessions if you guys want to hang out on that. And then for sure, I'm going to start using Instagram, uh, not Instagram, uh, TikTok Live a little bit more. So make sure you're checking out that. We are also five away. We're five away from 1,200. We're getting there. We're getting closer. Wrestling TikTok is getting a lot uh, less toxic. I mean, there's still some stupids out there, as we could tell, but it's a lot less toxic. Make sure you're jumping on that. Max Wrestling UK TikTok is where you want to be to get all this great stuff. All right. And all right. all right, here we go. With the socials to finish this up, you can find us on the evil Twitter machine at Max Wrestling UK, at the Captain 512, and at SMR Podnet. Also, make sure you're checking out the website, maxwrestling.net. And don't forget to hit the sub and the follow button on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, especially YouTube. Get us to our goal. We're trying to get to 500, and we need y'all help. Share this with your buddies. You know you want to. Yeah, it's easy. It takes a couple of seconds. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And with that said, join us next week. For it feels way too early to be saying this, our Christmas episode. Oh, we're getting <laughs> festive. We will see you at Max Wrestling Christmas Clash. You've been watching the Cap and Mo. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night. Be kind to everyone. You don't know what's going down in the mind. 
And no, I don't have a link to those videos. I actually don't. 